Okay, so now we are going to um, move on. Um, as I say, if you have a question that comes up later, please enter it in the chat in the Q&A. Um, our speakers can see that even um, asynchronously out of this presentation time. Uh, but now I'm going to hand it over to our next presentation and our speaker, Anna Dabrowski. Hi, everyone. Just checking, can you all see my presentation? Yes, we can. Okay, excellent. Oh, that was unintentional. Let me go back. There we go. All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Anna Dabrowski. I work in the data management and collections group at the Texas Advanced Computing Center at the University of Texas at Austin. And today I'm speaking both for myself and my collaborator, Jessica Trologan. Uh, Jessica coordinates research data management services at the UT libraries. Unfortunately, she is unable to join us. So I'm going to do my best today to present her points. Um, in today's presentation, I'll share with you how we're collaborating across our two institutions on the Dolce Initiative. In particular, I'll discuss our pilot project uh, to publish larger data in the Texas Data Repository and talk about our goals to further improve data publication uh, for researchers at the University of Texas. So the purposes of Dolce, uh, otherwise known as the Digital Object Lifecycle Initiative, is to pursue projects that combine the expertise and service spe specializations of tech and the UT libraries in order to develop the necessary infrastructure, mechanisms, and policies for ensuring that data are safeguarded and usable or fair uh, throughout the research lifecycle. For a current project, um, both TAC and the UT libraries have been hearing from researchers expressing a need for simple publication options for their large data. And in this case, uh, these data sets might be in the many gigabytes to terabyte size. And so for the past year, we've focused Dolce on a pilot project to extend existing data publication options that are provided by the UT libraries. In particular, we've allowed a community of researchers at the University of Texas to publish their large data within the Texas Data Repository. Before I get into our project, uh, I'd like to give you some background on our organizations. Um, so our initiative was born from a desire to align interests across two quite different organizations at the University of Texas. On the tax side, uh, we focus primarily on high performance computing infrastructure for research. So the Texas Advanced Computing Center serves researchers across the US and internationally. And we usually support uh, computationally intensive workflows for processing data on our machines. And we also provide storage systems uh, for managing and for archiving data. Within the data management and collections group that I'm a part of, uh, we also support projects in building data collections, custom repositories and data models and software stacks. Uh, so this is, in this case, data publication might be one objective of larger projects. So this project uh, or this process is usually grant funded and it's quite intensive and um, often for larger research projects, which leaves individual researchers who use TAC who might have large or small data um, in need of easier publication mechanisms when they're using our systems. And also notably, uh, TAC doesn't really function as a stewarding organization. So we provide support uh, to researchers as well as infrastructure, but the researchers themselves and the research community are ultimately responsible for determining how the data are managed, curated, and maintained over time. So from our perspective, uh, the interest in data publication is oftentimes in having pipelines that will allow researchers to move from data processing and analysis at TAC to publication with a stewarding organization uh, where we don't have to design a new software stack every time researchers are interested in publishing data. Uh, and we're also interested in having data, especially larger data, being stored uh, near computational uh, infrastructure. On the other hand, um, the library's mission is to provide services to the campus community at UT in order to support learning, research and discovery, and access to information. 
So the University of uh, Texas at Austin Libraries provide research data management assistance uh, with a focus on early planning and training for researchers and long-term long access to the products of research. The UT Libraries specialize in deep domain knowledge uh, with subject liaisons and long tail research support. And they rely on partnerships with institutions like TAC to support groups that have more complex or custom infrastructure needs. They also use partnerships and consortial memberships to scale and sustain their services. So in particular, the Texas Data Repository, which is hosted by the Texas Digital Library for publishing data. Data that are published by UT researchers within the Texas Data Repository, or TDR, are treated as part of the UT Library's stewarded collections, and the libraries commit to ensuring that they are accessible for a minimum of at least 10 years. So from the library's perspective, uh, really in aligning interests, their interest is in improving support for UT researchers with publishing data sets within the existing Texas Data Repository system. So in our project, we found an opportunity to combine our interests and take advantage of existing infrastructure for data publication. For our large data publication project, uh, we're taking advantage of the Texas Data Repository as a tool that has support from the Texas Digital Libraries. Uh, and just like a thought that it might be a good idea for us to also introduce what the TDR is for those who might not be familiar. Uh, the Texas Digital Library launched the Texas Data Repository, or TDR, in 2017 due to a growing need for data publishing options. TDR uses a shared instance of the open source Dataverse software platform, which is developed uh, and used by Harvard University. And TDR currently has 10 member institutions that are participating in this consortial repository service. Each member institution has its own authentication and its own local support person for their community. TDL provides the technical support, including troubleshooting and software updates. And each member institution will provide the local support and controls uh, the way that their collections are managed. At the University of Texas, Jessica is the contact point, and she offers training opportunities as well as support for individual researchers and research groups to prepare their data for publication. The service at UT is currently set up to allow for unmediated deposits, and this means that researchers have total freedom over how they publish their data and their publication process and their collections, so they can decide uh, what kind of access restrictions they might want to have on their data, when they want to publish their data, and how to structure and describe their own data sets when they do publish them in the TDR. For our project, uh, we've been concerned primarily with enabling researchers at UT to publish data sets that are beyond the size limits of TDR's default storage option. And the default option already generously allows researchers to publish data sets up to 10 gigabytes in size. But what we've been hearing on our campus um, is that researchers are interested in a more storage space and that they believe this isn't enough um, storage for their large data sets that they'd like to publish. So our aim, our aim has been to explore uh, this need from researchers who have expressed it and really see how much space do researchers need to publish their data. In order to do this, uh, we added a new storage option for the TDR that can be used uh, for data sets that are larger than 10 gigabytes in size. On the technical side, uh, we've allowed the repository software to manage multiple data storage locations and improve the data ingest process with direct uploads for large files. We then connected the TDR to storage at the Texas Advanced Computing Center in addition to the default TDL storage option. So now what we're able to do is have large data files live on tax systems while smaller files continue to live on the traditional storage option. Everything that's being published is still managed and published through the Texas Data Repository software hosted by the Texas Digital Library, meaning that the same interface is there and users don't really see a difference when they're uploading or downloading or publishing their data. It all appears in the same place. And on the back end, all the published data continue to be stored by the UT libraries. So even the data that are being stored at TAC, the libraries are taking responsibility over that storage allocation as well. So if you're curious about uh, the technical details, uh, further details are documented at the link below, and we'll be sharing the slides after the presentation as well. Importantly, our pilot project has many partners and stakeholders that have made it possible. 
So the software development work in order to have multiple uh, data storage options was funded by the University of Texas at Austin's Planet Texas 2050 research program. And we've really focused our pilot data publication services on this community of researchers. Also importantly, in addition to TAC and the UT libraries collaborating, the Texas Digital Library has been our project partner and supporter throughout this project. Since the Texas Data Repository is also a consortial repository, the software development work that we've been conducting and our policy recommendations for the Texas Data Repository as a whole directly impact other Texas institutions, and they also need to be considered by the Texas Data Repository Steering Committee. Additionally, the Dataverse software that the Texas Data Repository uses is an open source software project. This means that the code that we wrote for our project as part of Dolce was contributed back to the general Dataverse community project, and it can also be used by institutions across the world to manage multiple data storage options of their own. In terms of results from our pilot and our ongoing service development at UT, the technical implementation is fully functional, uh, meaning that we're able to publish data both using the default storage option or the tax storage option for large data. And our code has also been uh, given to the Dataverse software community and it's been picked up by them and is being further developed as well. We've been testing local publication workflows with our user community here, and we've already published some data, which has made us aware of some potential improvements to uh, the functionality, and that includes uh, making the publication process simpler and also improving download for large data sets. We've also submitted a report with our recommendations for the Texas Data Repository Steering Committee to consider, and that's also available at the link in the slide here. And we're continuing to work on identifying and meeting the needs of our pilot community to publish their data. So again, we've been focusing on a community of researchers uh, who are also funded by the Planet Texas 2050 initiative. Uh, and these researchers uh, have so far produced uh, not that much large data. So we're waiting to see if these researchers will be producing more data and see if uh, our service will be, continue to be useful for them. In the meantime, we've also gradually expanded our offer to other researchers on campus who have expressed a need for large data. And we're trying to see if we can fill up our five terabyte allocation to continue testing our workflows for data publication. So as we're testing um, data publication with this pilot, we still have many questions that remain for the libraries around long-term preservation of the data from the pilot as well as creating a sustainable local service at UT that can be expanded to all researchers um, at the university. And the TDL providing alternative data storage as an option for the TDR member institutions in general. In terms of launching a local service, uh, the libraries are thinking right now a lot about staffing and sustainability and gaining support from the university in order to provide this as a service to all researchers at the university. They're also thinking about a um, payment model for this uh, storage option. So this includes the possibility of charging researchers at the beginning of their projects. Um, so for example, during the data management planning process to write into their data management plans, uh, cost of storage um, for 10 years in order to have their data uh, published and accessible in the TDR. Additionally, the libraries are thinking through managing um, the allocation at tech. Um, our resources do have a yearly uh, renewal process, and so uh, there needs to be a staff member responsible uh, for managing that allocation as well. For the TDR more broadly, um, this model still needs to be recommended uh, by the state TDR steering committee before multiple storage um, locations can become an option for other institutions. And some important considerations here include uh, that each institution would then be responsible for managing its own remote storage model, which would include determining which data uh, go to which storage location and when, and what kind of preservation workflows may need to be enabled uh, for a remote storage option. Although the UT libraries have used TAC and we've been able to set, um, set that up, other storage options uh, are available and possible for a remote storage location, but those would also require additional testing uh, by that institution. 
And then finally, uh, TDL also needs to determine how they can provide support uh, and consider the costs that they'll need to undertake in order to help set up additional storage options for other institutions, as well as manage these options um, from their side. Uh, so beyond our pilot project, we also have several ongoing collaborations as part of Dolce that we'd like to share with you. And these include um, improving data publication workflows more generally. Uh, so there are many avenues to improve our data publication workflows uh, for particular use cases. And from the tech perspective, uh, we're often concerned with having data near and accessible to computational resources, especially when those data are large and they can be difficult to transfer or manage when they're stored and moved around to other locations. So now that we have a storage allocation at TAC, for the Texas Data Repository to manage published data, we're starting to think about ways that we can, lack, uh, we can link our tax software with the Texas Data Repository. And one area of work here is enabling our own online portals to publish data directly to the TDR. So the Texas Data Repository provides online portals that give our users access to their data and uh, to run workflows on our com computational systems and then to see their data outputs. So our goal here would be to allow researchers that are interested in publishing their data, um, so the outputs of perhaps their model runs uh, to TDR, to have uh, a button or an easy link to be able to publish data, to add their metadata and directly publish in the TDR without needing to change systems. Another area of collaboration as part of Dolce is in the distribution of geospatial data as web services. So these services would enable direct access to geospatial data layers using a variety of different software and web applications as clients without users needing to download data files um, as is traditionally done. So both TAC and the UT libraries are running uh, geospatial data servers. And although we have servers that are for different purposes with different service models and software cho choices, we're both interested in identifying and pulling appropriate geospatial data that's already published within the Texas Data Repository and pushing those data to our um, geospatial data servers. So TAC runs an instance of the open source GeoServer platform and the UT libraries are running ArcGIS. So we're also uh, interested in seeing the differences between these two uh, GeoServers. And this is where uh, Jessica Michael Shainsky at the UT uh, Libraries and I are starting to collaborate along with a capstone student um, from, UT, from the UTI school. Uh, and we're looking at identifying geospatial data within TDR, which is already one problem, but also um, appropriate metadata for this data and mechanisms for easily pulling and pushing those data uh, to the right um, area in our servers. And then finally, at UT, uh, as we mentioned, uh, TDR is offered to researchers with a completely unmediated deposit model, uh, meaning that researchers can publish their data however they please. Um, in launching and establishing a TDR as a service on campus, uh, Jessica chose this option in, because her initial efforts were focused on outreach and training and making sure that researchers would start using the repository um, for their data publication. So those efforts uh, paid off and the libraries now have a self-feeding service with a steady, steady stream of deposits. Um, and after they um, developed the service, they also took the next step of assessing the quality of the deposits and publication within the Texas Data Repository. And this assessment found uh, that researchers could use more guidance in their data publication and potentially uh, intervention as they're publishing their data in order to ensure that those data are reusable and more aligned with FAIR principles. So over the past year, Jessica has also been exploring ways to include a more robust support for data curation at UT, uh, including distributing the workload uh, for curation, as well as tapping into the subject expertise required to curate a diverse research uh, set of research data. So she started to pilot curation services with liaison librarians at UT, in which TAC also participates and uh, helps to explore options. Jessica has been following the data curation network's work in this area very closely, and her pilot is using the DCN's curated framework 
and they're starting to try out a variety of different tools and workflows to curate existing deposits in the repository, and then to determine whether the libraries can actually sustain a mediated or perhaps a semi-mediated deposit model. Um, and they're exploring various software tools that can help with this workflow. And this is also where TAC is interested in helping to see if we can identify ways to help to automate this process and make the curation process uh, simpler uh, for librarians as well. Uh, with that, I'd like to thank our collaborators and our partners. Uh, that includes Courtney Muma at the Texas Digital Library, Jim Myers from the Global Dataverse Community Consortium, Colleen Leon, as well as Michael Shainsky from the University of Texas at Austin Libraries, and Chris Jordan and Suzanne Pierce uh, from the Texas Advanced Computing Center. And with that, I wanted to open it up to any questions and also share our email addresses here where you can feel free to write to either of us uh, with questions about our pilot project or any of these other collaborations. Thank you, Anna. I uh, went ahead, I put the link to the Dulce uh, report in the chat as well. So people can really click on that. Um, yeah, I appreciate that. To peruse. Um, we're getting lots of thank yous in the chat, as always. I, I just think that's so awesome. <laughs> I guess that I think we would really have in person, other than applause, of course, <laughs> um, digital um, applause. Do we have any um, questions for Anna and Jessica in absentia or um, for our first presenters of um, AM? I have a, a question for you, Anna. Uh, oh, wait, um, Sarah has a question for you, Anna. Um, how did you decide on the 10-year standard you mentioned for in, uh, ensuring availability for data? Mm -hmm. So that is actually a policy for the Texas Data Repository. Um, and that was written um, by the Texas Digital Libraries, I believe with the steering committee. So I'm not sure about the history about that policy, but it is a policy of the TDR. Um, and one of the things to note there is because the Texas Digital Libraries manage the default storage option um, with the support of the member institutions, um, that promise can be made uh, for the repository as a whole. However, if we are bringing on these other storage locations, such as TAC, uh, those kinds of policies also have to be determined for those storage locations because they'll no longer be managed by the Texas Digital Libraries. Um, there won't be that kind of oversight. It'll be up to the institution uh, that brings up this new storage option to determine those policies. And so the UT Libraries would very much uh, like to and aim to also maintain kind of uh, access to the data for 10 years, uh, just like the default storage option. So that would be the goal for the tax storage uh, as well, um, just to kind of keep things uh, the same throughout. But that is something that institutions uh, will need to kind of consider um, on their own when they have their own storage options, if that makes sense. Courtney mentioned, I'll add that the TDR policy is, quote, at least 10 years without intention to deaccession. Yes. And so TDL does a better job. Um, I think <laughs> right now we're, you know, we, TAC and the libraries are thinking 10 years makes sense, um, but we don't have those workflows implemented for longer term preservation in the same way as TDL has. And so that's also kind of an area for future work and discussion to really figure out how we can um, be more robust in, in that as well. But for, for us, 10 years minimum is the, is the aim too. Excellent. 
Yeah, I know there was kind of a lot of information there in a whirlwind, so I'm happy to clarify anything or answer questions if I was speaking too quickly. Well, I believe we are actually nearing the end of our session time. And so I want to thank all of our speakers today and all of our um, viewers, participants. And this is a very exciting experiment for us in doing it virtually. I also um, want to point out in the chat, I linked to two relevant posters for today's sessions. Uh, both of them are about Texas data repositories. and um, so if, if you were interested in that, there's a connection that way. And then uh, tomorrow, uh, Wednesday, during our last session, we have another one, and I'm sorry, I don't have a link to it, about working uh, with subject librarians for outreach and development of um, new digital technologies uh, that I think would align also really well with our first presentation. So with that, let me get over here. Uh, just a few more little announcements. Um, I want to make sure is that um, TDL is looking to gauge interest in forming a new member group around research integrity. And that's certainly very relevant to um, this session here. And uh, this is a building on the success of our brief research integrity workshop series back in February. And we have a survey uh, for you to fill out if you have a little bit of time. I'm putting it here in the chat um, as well. We would really appreciate that. Um, and anyone is welcome to take it, um, even if you are not currently uh, at a TDL membership institution. So with that, thank you all all so much for joining us today. And if you have um, any other questions, you can uh, post them in the Q&A later. Um, this is designed to be asynchronous as well, or to open it up in the community. I hope you'll have a great rest of the day and I'll be seeing you at the rest of the conference. Thank you, Shelly. Thank you. Thanks, Shelly.